Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Empire Total War with the Russo-Turkish War Battle Series using the Russo-Turkish War mod. Last time around, we took a look at the prelude of the Siege of Kars, and today we're going to do the Siege of Kars. There wasn't a lot of information to be found about this, but I got the troop numbers. So for the Russians, they numbered about 30 to 28,000 men. Most of which was actually Armenian volunteers that came from the area. On the Turkish side, or the Ottoman side, we're looking at about 25,000 troops defending the castle, where of which about 5,000 were regulars and 20,000 were irregulars. I'm gonna add a few historical pictures here of the castle and battle maps as we're going to use a pretty standardized castle for Empire. So, as I've said many times before, we do the best to kind of uh, fit uh, the historical information into a game like Empire or Napoleon. But, of course, there are quite severe limitations in terms of the quality of map and troops and so on. But, uh, I think we've done, so far, pretty well. No one's really complained. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, put that out there. And yeah, as to remind everyone that we're not trying to recreate the battle, how it would, look, would be fought or the historical outcome. We're taking the uh, numbers of troops, roughly the terrain or the, um, you know, the castle of the battle, and uh, we play it out in total war. With that said, let's go into the actual replay of the battle. A lot foggier when we actually fought the battle than in my starting off replay, or my introduction. One thing that I actually have been thinking about that I should go ahead and do in the start, or, or when for battles, is I should really screenshot the troops I have, and my opponent should as well, so we can actually show, so you get a bigger, a better view of what the troops are, rather than me going, oh, I think I have five um, so-and-so. Anyways, I haven't done this for the series, but that's something to think about in the future. With that said, here we are, Siege of Cars. Let's start in the back. So I have two batteries right here. We've got howitzer and a parrot gun bombarding the fort. Um, if we go up from there, we've got three units of militia. Over in the forest over here, I've got three units of Cossack infantry. In the front, I've got three units, I believe, of rifles. The rifles are then backed up by the main line, which is uh, eight units of line infantry. There were some questions or some concerns that the Russian troops were so much better than the uh, Ottoman troops, but in terms of the line infantry, there is no significant difference. There's just a slight advantage to the Russian in melee attack and melee defense. But not that, I mean, melee attack and melee defense hasn't really mattered in any of the battles so far. There hasn't been a huge, like, mm, sort of... It isn't a melee-based mod when most units have 50 to 70 accuracy. It's mostly about shooting down the enemy and blasting them with artillery. Which I'm doing right now. So I've got the rifles moving up, targeting some of the troops that are outside the castles. It's two units. I was about to say two units of reservists, but it's one unit of reservists and one unit of Egyptian line infantry. These guys are getting slaughtered because their rifles are able to target them beyond the range or where they can respond. We are suffering some casualties though. Along the fort walls there are these cannons firing shot bouncing through our lines, and I think I team killed quite a few troops moving forward here, especially on the right, uh, because of the, uh, the elevation of the terrain. 
I'm actually probably killing more of my own than the enemy is. Uh, but in the heat of battles, stuff like that is easily missed. Um, and of course in Empire there's no... I believe in comparison, if you compare Empire to Napoleon, there is actually um, more of a um, like hindrance, like the troops in Napoleon won't just go ahead and fire straight into friendly troops and stuff like that. They will, however, do that in Empire. Uh, enemy general died? I do not know. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. So he sent troops around to take out, or he had some cavalry units to take out my uh, artillery. The thing, though, is the three Cossack units that I mentioned in the beginning, they were hiding here in the forest. And as soon as he got really close, I just told them to open fire. And they shot down, he countercharged, and as we know, the Cossacks have proven quite deadly in melee combat. I'm not entirely sure how they're able to cut down cavalry constantly like that. And the thing is, the Cossack infantry, when I actually looked at the statistics of the Cossack infantry, they weren't that much better in melee than or like how they have been performing in the battle. For instance here the Bazibuzuks which are fighting over here against Russian uh, the, the uh, militia unit here. Bazibuzuk is actually a pretty god awful unit in terms of accuracy in melee. What they have is they have a morale advantage especially against Russian militia, which would be the equivalent, at least in accuracy. They have a big advantage in um, in the, well, I was about to say discipline, but the morale, so they will hold for longer in a straight even fight where they're not being flank fired upon Cossack infantry. And we've sent them off, the militia units sent them off. Well, most, I believe mostly it would have been the Cossacks firing into the flank. We have loads of troops have been gunned down over here. Now, it could be enemy fire, but I also suspect there's quite a lot of friendly fire going on. It was quite a while since I did the battles, so I don't exactly remember. At the same time, we've been bombarding the fort walls, trying to break them down as best as possible. Uh, a lot of cannons and a lot of troops on the walls have been killed. Still though, some guns persist and are inflicting damage on us. I seize the building. That's uh, the main wall was actually taken by m some of my troops. We got this Bazibazoot unit sitting on the side here firing onto my rifles. But I'm moving in line infantry to sweep them away. As we're getting closer to actually breaching the walls, the Ottoman forces are retreating within the castle, setting up within the buildings. Some here are so keen, they're even firing right now! Right into the wall. So we got 65% over here, and we've got 78% over here. Now the troops are advancing over here. There is some more cavalry in here. I don't actually remember exactly where they went, but I imagine they were probably sent over to this side. Um, in terms of troops numbers, I, as I recall, we set up pretty even troops, in, term, in numbers anyways, as the Ottoman army was mostly set up with irregular troops, with about 5,000 regulars. But the thing is, I, we felt that to make it a little bit more of a fight, we can't just have like the buzzy bazook and stuff. So there are more like line infantry within in than maybe it should have been. So we got one militia unit has taken the main wall, which means that I can move troops through the gate if I want to. Although usually that's quite buggy. So right now we're setting up and we're actually firing down and punishing the Ottoman units 
from the walls, and as we can see, both sides here have been open. What I'm going to do with the artillery now is actually focus on the back sides, and we're going to blow those two pieces open as well. Not so much because I need to get in through there. I wanted as much smoke and fire to consume this castle as possible. There's still quite a few Ottomans left, but the heavy barrage has killed so many of them. Even though I haven't been specifically targeting them. Now the Cossacks are making their attack on the left side of the wall. Gonna go for this armory right here. And then on the right side we've got three units of Colonial Line Infantry making their approach ready to charge in on the right side. The Ottomans are preparing to defend. Um, we just saw the Russian commander of this unit cut down an Ottoman. There goes another. However, as you saw, there goes uh, one of the Cossacks. And as the Cossacks are moving forward here, they're actually firing somehow through the wall. I guess there's supposed to be windows over here. Cossacks making their way inside the building. In a sort of hindsight, one might have wanted to add a battery for the uh, howitzer battery for the Ottomans to make sure that they could do some damage on the attackers more so, but we weren't sure exactly how the battle or how the fort would affect the battle per se. Let's see, oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm sending in more troops. Oh no, ah oh, yes! The uh, cavalry were coming in, they were gonna, they moved all the way around and then was supposed to go like this and come in through the back. Now they did manage to do that but not in the numbers needed to actually do anything significant against the Cossack infantry here. Plus, I had a unit of rifles, almost fresh, hiding in the tall grass here, ready to cut them to absolute smithereens. The thing to do here, I mean, it's a pretty good tactic to do this because I wasn't expecting that at all. I was concentrating all over the place. But um, what one man might have done is, as they are melling right now, you would try to focus in a line infantry unit to sh shoot them down while they're focused like that. However, though, saying that, knowing that even more Russians are now pouring in through, or Armenians. Armenian volunteers pouring in through the main gate and we've got these troops over here actually mostly firing on their own troops and then we've got this unit over here this I remember in fact that I felt as though I wasn't making much of a headway going this way and that we were actually losing quite a bit oh here's some Kurdish infantry we did spice it up a little bit with uh, trying to figure out what kind of troops we would, uh, or what kind of um, irregular troops would we put in. Given the history of the Kurds and the Turkish right now, I doubt they would ever fight for the Turks ever again. So we break down the back part of the wall over here. We're about to break down this part as well. If I had cavalry um, for my army, this would be great because I could swarm in around. But the thing is, cavalry, as we've seen, is not that good in this mod. Usually they just die. So we got more Kurdish infantry. We got some Egyptian line infantry. I believe in previous battles I've said that they were uh, slightly better than the normal line infantry, that the Egyptian ones were a little bit better. That would uh, actually be false, because once I took a look at the stats of the different units more closely, uh, these are just the same as the line infantry. It's just that they're called Egyptian line infantry. So we're moving 
through. We've taken about the first half of the castle, as we can see. And we're moving in to attack the back part of it. However, still quite a few houses remains. We got two armories over there and we got one over here with troops back here. Probably a mistake I made here was to have them just fire at will rather than actually telling these guys to select target on these troops. Firing onto the house is uh, useless. I am targeting a number of these buildings with my artillery and now I'm even sending one unit in as I recall for a bayonet attack. I can't remember if I was going to charge the Kurdish infantry or if they were going to go inside the houses. Looks like they're actually going for the Kurdish infantry. Here comes the charge. I just blew up tons of my own men. And here we've got the Armenian volunteers, or the Russian line infantry in this case, fighting the Kurdish troops. And the Kurds are... Uh, wait, the Russians were shattered. I was about to say the Kurds were shattered, but they weren't. They actually held their line. At the same time, I broke down this house to uh, halfway, so we've got some big holes opening up, so we can kind of see what's going on in there. Not particularly good building, as there are not that many firing ports. Hello there, everyone. There, as we can see, due to just the amount of firepower and troops I've sent in, um, together with the artillery fire, I mean, th this battle was such a c absolute carnage in terms of troops lost. So you can see all of the troops that I've sent in, there's very few of them left. But here comes the final reinforcement, so another three units are moving in. And it's just going to overwhelm the Ottomans. I do have some Cossacks set up in this house, firing. You can see fire burning right at the door there. I hope no one's left inside because they're not getting out without running straight through the fire. More artillery shells landing all over the place. As I recall, there wasn't like a final key moment. I think the Ottomans kind of just broke a mass and ran out the back, as I recall. Artillery fire raining down. Together with uh, so much rifle fire from the uh, Russian troops. Russians making their charge. We got one marching forward. I believe this one was actually going to charge to take one of the houses. Yes, I'm going to try and take this one right here. And then there's another bayonet charge in preparation going over there. Are they able to fire in time? No, they're not. Instead, they move straight into the bayonet attack. They're overwhelmed by the numbers of the Russian unit. They do hold and they put up a brave fight. But they're so heavily outnumbered. There's not a lot they can do. Officer sword fighting there, he just stabbed the guy, or did he really? Kind of looked like the sword jumped past the soldier. And I believe this is it. This is when the Ottomans break. Uh, interesting, they sh oh, they're shaking and wavering, but they're actually charging into the house. People climbing up and down. The strange staircase. We've got Kurdish guy just looking at the... All the Ottomans are running, but the Kurdish guy is going straight into... He's the last of his unit, and he's going straight into the fire. He realized, though, that setting himself on fire in the name of the Ottoman Empire might not be the thing to do. And he's now leaving through the back as the Ottomans are either getting burnt alive or stabbed by the Russians. The thing though is, 
the Russians might have won, but look at the casualty rate on I mean on both sides. In total, we're talking about about 9,000 people lying dead on the ground here, out of a total 11,000 men deployed, roughly. A li maybe a little bit more than 11,000. Just a little bit more. So out of 11,000 men, everyone taking part, about 9,000 are lying dead. The Ottoman, of course, their casualty rate being way high. We'll look at what what's left. There's uh, uh, 30, and then so 150 Ottomans made it out, or 149 and one Kurd. While the Russians, the thing is though, the casualty rate wasn't the self-inflicted damage on myself wasn't as high as I might have thought. Still pretty high though. About 500 men were almost shot by my by my own fire, as you can see here. The enemy killed about 3,000, and I lost about 3,500. So I shot 500 of my own men. As we go into the killers here, we see rifles ending up very high and then a colonial infantry here. This one though got absolutely massacred with only 20 men remaining. Rifles, no surprise. Thing is, I'm pretty sure our artillery would have ended up higher, but I mentioned that so many times at this point, you're sick of hearing it. Rifles, really high. Probably should have minimized the use of rifles. Maybe not even had them at all, now when I think about it. Um, but given the result here, that even though I had the artillery and the troops and so on, I lost s such a high, incredible casualty rate. For the actual battle, the casualty rate would have been nowhere near this. But then again, they weren't um, play acting in a game to make a cool video. With that said... Let's go ahead and say as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoy this video, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!